Hey guys, what's up? It's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu-Jitsu, of course. I'm Jared Jessup of IQ Jiu-Jitsu. And I've got a lot of requests over time from different people, and it's almost like um, they want to know more about leg, the leg lock game, because mm -hmm. there's so much in the leg lock game right now, but um, everything is like the best entry to get to this weird reverse kind of entanglement, and how to get to this entanglement, and how to set these things up. And whenever you understand what the what the goals are, then you can orient your movement around around converging upon those those given goals. Yeah, so it's almost like you're beginning with the end in mind, which is a much better alternative to being the dog chasing the car and then knowing all these different great entries and different positions and not knowing what the hell to do once you get there. So um, let's start with like one of the most uh, basic, I guess, um, but even though it's basic, it's, it's very uh, common that it's going to wind us up in great positions to finish. And that's going to be the straight foot lock. The mechanics of this itself is I want to get fairly perpendicular with my form to the Achilles tendon on Jared. Whenever I get to that position, it's possible I could figure four as long as it doesn't corrupt the angle here too much. But I want to draw back and make sure that I'm not too high up on the calf. I slide here until this heel almost catches me. I want to pull this one through nice and deep like a guillotine choke or figure four, whichever you prefer. And then uh, a very important thing to take into consideration, I'm not just folding and bending and trying to break it this way, I'm also crushing the foot here. And to uh, be able to achieve that, what I'm doing is I'm trying to take my shoulder toward the floor over on this side here, and then I'm gonna arch back this way, achieving the break here like that. As I go for this uh, straight ankle lock here, sometimes to help add to the pressure, if I stay on the elbow, my own weight stops me from being able to apply enough pressure. So once I get my hand right here, well, one of the first things, I wanna make sure it's in the right position. So as I slide back, using my foot to stand on Eli, I'll feel it catch. I feel the forearm catch the heel and the toes catch at the armpit. Now, if I just lift up from here, there's, not a, uh, there's too much space essentially. So I'm gonna grab my wrist and pull through. I had to take my weight off of the elbow to allow it freedom to come close to my hip. Now, as I pull my knuckles up to my chin and sit my hip back in and through, the pressure gets super nasty. So you can either do it like Jerry was talking about, pulling here like this and getting across so that the weight's not on that the elbow any longer, or pushing the shoulder to the floor so the weight distributes to the shoulder, allowing me that arch back. Either way, we're looking at crushing, constricting the, the foot here like that, isolating it, and then folding it until it's gonna break. Probably the most uh, popular of the game is the heel hook, <laughs> right? So um, this is one where the heel hook could be something from the inside, from the outside. You hear things like top side uh, and whatever. Um, essentially though, whatever our leg entanglement situation is, whenever I'm going to look here to isolate this, um, I may not be able to get quite all the way through. And even if I could get through for the straight foot lock, the heel hook is more powerful and it's going to have a lot more damaging effect. So um, the ways are to catch. Yes, catch sometimes. Yeah. So when we, when we get to this position here, I want to try to find this. One way I can do it is by going head down and actually fishing back. Sometimes that's a little problematic. So instead, if I catch right here on the heel and grab it by palming it like that and then pulling it until it's inside and I'm taking, trying to smash the flat of the top of this foot into my armpit to isolate it. Now I can maintain this kind of butterfly grip or go snuff box, uh, palms together, cable grip like this, pinch the elbows together like this here. And now there is a slight rotation, but there's also an extension of pushing his toes back toward his butt and extending with my hips here so that it's a bit like a quick draw action as well. Remember that the heel hook is not smashing the ankle necessarily. It's more of an, uh, it actually ruptures the knee. So I'm right here, I, lit, I come back and as my elbow comes down to my hip and I bring my shoulder back, it flexes the foot, um, making, because we're using a triangle here, one, two, three, I rotate these two to rupture the knee. So as I come back, it flexes the foot and opens his knee, allowing me to access the heel. I go palm away and make the grip or however I need to, and then I'm gonna sit my hip through his knee, um, keeping the structure tight so his leg doesn't have many outs. This is why those leg entanglements become so important because the mechanics, once you kind of figure those out, are fairly simple as long as you can get the good heel exposure and you can get the good rotation and tightness and isolate the, the range of motion behind it. And so that's the job of the leg entanglements that are so popular now, whether it's 50-50, inside Ashi, it's all these different things. So that's uh, lots of different tutorials on those uh, that you can look at, but right now we're just focusing kind of on these different mechanics of how the actual submission looks. So now we've looked at the straight foot lock, we've looked at the heel hook from both inside and outside. Um, another one that, that tends to go here like this too is uh, if Jared is here and he does the toe hold. Yeah, the toe hold is, is almost like a, a figure four America or an Americana uh, with the arm only on the, the foot. So right here I can roll forward and catch the toes. 
extend here and I want the pinky to kind of come roll over the toes. Now I'm gonna come up and wrap and make the grip, okay? So right here, I'm kind of rolling it this way and crushing the foot down and almost back to Eli's butt. It's very important to notice that um, whenever you do get to this position to be able to employ the toe hold, it's that um, I'm not allowing Jared's leg to go straight. So whatever position I have to accomplish to be able to keep this bent, that's gonna have to be necessary for me uh, whenever I uh, go to it to actually attack for the toe hold here. So again, too, I wanna go here. You can also use your head pressed against the, the hand uh, connection here like this to make sure that you're, you're in place. And I wanna get a nice tight squeeze on it here like this, taking the range of motion out of it and then accomplishing that. A lot of times when uh, the damage actually happens on uh, toe holds, those can also um, damage the ankle and they can also damage the knee. But a lot of times it's these bones in the top of the foot or these um, uh, uh, ligaments too in the top of the foot that tend to tear and tend to snap as well. So we've looked at now the straight foot lock, we've looked at the inside and outside heel hook, um, kind of the heel hook is one, and then the toe hold, what's next? The See, knee bar. The knee bar, yeah. Knee bar. So. so we'll just look from, uh, from right here, several different ways of uh, course to get into the knee bar. One is just kind of like a reverse step. So I uh, wrap the leg, uh, straighten, have a seat, and come here and make a nice bite, and then cross the ankles. Um, cupping the leg and keeping him elevated. I don't want him rotating his body back and forth. So I use my calf to control the center mass and the other leg supports. Now this hand will keep the, the toes on the south side of my head as I go to wrap right here. Now I extend the hips forward, pulling my shoulders back to crush the knee. Something that you notice like that is uh, where on all these, whenever you're attacking a joint, especially a hinge joint, you have to think about the adjacent ball and socket joint. So if I'm attacking the elbow, I have to think about isolating the range of motion of the shoulder. So the same is if I'm attacking the knee, I have to isolate the range of motion of the hip that's adjacent to it. So a good way for me to do that is think about the three points of articulation on the limb, the ankle, the knee, and the hip, and then make sure that I've uh, kind of taken the range of motion out. So if I'm looking at doing a knee bar similar to what Jared was just showing here, then whenever I go in for this kind of reverse step, I sit in, um, I make sure like squeeze, hold, isolated the hip. Once I pull this straight here, then a, a little enhancement that I can do to this as well is I can, if this can fit between my ear and my shoulder right here, I can pinch it. I can also hold the heel similar to what we were doing on the heel hook. And now because I've isolated the range of motion of that heel, then whenever I go to extend my hips, there's a slight rotation and that's gonna add extra torque on the knee down here. Now as Eli's arm stays through right here, um, if I were to go to try and catch my leg over, his hand comes and block. So now the more I go to extend my, my leg, it actually makes it easier for him to catch the lock itself. Mm. So now um, this is almost an honorable mention, but since it is like a, like a leg attack, and it's also one of my favorite leg attacks too, and this is a compression lock, and this is uh, referred to generally as a calf slicer. So there could be a calf slicer or a hamstring slicer a lot of the time, and lots of different ways we can get into it, but again, not necessarily the focus of this video. If um, we're gonna look at it from, if I enter it from a turtle position. This is something that may have happened like whenever I get this first inside hook, and so now um, I want to isolate the leg that I'm hooking. So I may um, dive over or I may pull back. Whenever I go to do this, I go here, I, now I have Jerry's leg exposed on this side like this. So um, what I would like to do is if I can get this folded back in, I wanna grab here. I don't grab the ankle because he's very strong at that and now he's using this quadricep to be able to extend. But instead I get high up on the foot like this here and I might need to reinforce it this way. I'm figure fouring right now, which is already powerful, but if I wanna add extra pressure to this here, then I can actually step on my own ankle and then by pushing this through and separating the knee as a in addition to adding pressure to the calf, it's very painful and if you don't have some very flexible knees, you're gonna feel it in the knee as well. So to reiterate guys, we got straight foot lock, we have the heel hook both inside and outside, we have the toe hold, the knee bar, and we have the calf slicer. And these are we, what we kind of feel like are the five core submissions. So if these were, you were always afraid to ask about, you know, what actually are these submissions? I'm, I don't know, I'm not educated about this. Hopefully you can use this video as a resource. And maybe even if you do play the leg lock game, you got some extra details out of it this time. So guys, I appreciate you uh, watching the video and keep watching the Night Jiu Jitsu channel. Check out Jared at IQ Jiu Jitsu on all the social media at IQJujitsu.com. Appreciate it, guys.